Hello, welcome back to another news video for Final Fantasy XIV with me, Mioni. Today we're looking at a summary of information from the 14-hour livestream Q&A session with Yoshi P. Um, from M. Killaby, the poster here, who summarized all of this information and translated this uh, so that people could bite size, take it to pieces. Um, it does include the live letter, scenario writer's interview, and the other panels as well. Uh, including at the bottom here, uh, information with Sakaguchi and the Zodiac Weapon Challenge as well. So if you're interested in that. Personally, today we're going to be looking at just the live Q&A because it's the most juiciest pile of information. So let's go through this. So apparently there will be one more ultimate fight during 6.x and this will not be delayed until 6.5. So I'm guessing that this will be closer to 6.3, that sort of area, or 6.4. There are conversations about having a team ranked season for Crystalline Conflict, but first the developers want to get the official tournaments off the ground. End quote. So if you weren't aware of this previously, um, they have talked about having Crystalline Conflict seasons uh, which are team queued. A lot of people have been asking for team-based ranked PvP, and um, it's not fallen on deaf ears, but they do want to do their own official tournaments first, um, which is something they've they've been talking about privately and uh, in the public to some degree recently in live letters and interviews. So um, I, I guess that's just around the corner. The developers haven't given up on the possibility of a cross data center party finder, but it would be a matter of years to be able to implement this. When it comes to cross data center, what they're really talking about is the ability to group with people on, you know, with other people from other data centers and have that uh, cross data center without having to leave your particular server, your particular data center as well. They do say this will take years to implement. One of the better solutions, I think, to this is to just have, um, you know, your group set up when you transfer over. If we're going to have to wait years for that, I personally would rather have that, you know, put on the back burner if it was my choice and instead have full cross uh, data center, but like cross region. But I would imagine that's probably going to take even further. So that's a bit unfortunate. On visiting the location, uh, location Corvos, which is mentioned several times in Endwalker, apparently there are plans to go here, says Yoshida. The developer's intention is that, to an extent, locations mentioned in-game will eventually be visitable. But the plans aren't fixed yet, and he can't say when this could happen. So, of course, Corvos being mentioned quite a lot. Um, obviously, we've got stuff like Mericidia being mentioned, which could very easily be somewhere we go to next. The New World, uh, you know, Under the Bounty, all these, all these things have been mentioned in the storyline, and it's likely they'll come to fruition at some point. Yoshida says that as a Black Mage player, the raid he enjoyed most was EHS. He enjoyed finding small optimizations and where to use ethereal manipulation to gain uptime. In terms of his perspective as producer and director out of Alliance raids, he especially likes Ozma as both the and both the first and second parts of O12S. Yeah, that's that's a good shout. Uh, really quite interesting fights. Um, there's a lot of standing still on Ozma, so I can imagine that would be uh, up there for any Black Mage. He says he will convey to the developer team people's request for a Namazu suit. So somebody asked about the idea of having a full suit for a Namazu. Uh, obviously, we have you know the, the swine outfit, we have the Moogle outfit. Where's our Namazu suit? A lot of people are just like dying. The other suits grey and then putting the hat on. Apparently we might be seeing a full Namazu suit in the game, so that's really hype. <laughs> Very excited for that personally. On job balance, Yoshida notes that the job balance team and the battle content team are the same people. He says no matter how much the developers thoroughly check everything, there could always be a difference in damage of, say, 1% simply due to the large number of jobs. The developers will keep trying, but he also says there isn't a game out there that has achieved a perfect balance. They've actually thought of having a staff member that would just work on testing striking dummies, but there hasn't been any applications. I mean, sign me up, I'll do it. <laughs> you know, I'm sure there's plenty of people who would offer that position. 
most people as well would offer that for free i think that they could just get people to test that um which is one of the reasons why a lot of other games have a ptr so that people can test these things but again i digress it's not that kind of game but uh yeah i'm, I'm sure they could get somebody to to do that it would be probably a really good idea to like sort of min max and see how things are going but at the same time sometimes too much optimization you know and and balance between things can be a little bit more boring let me know what you think anyway regarding a kind of catalog feature where you could check how dungeon equipment and such would work on your character yoshida says while it would take some work it could be technically possible and he will move this idea forward to the rest of the developer team so after playing stuff like uh, world of warcraft myself for many years sort of like an atlas loot where you can literally you know which eventually the devs for, for wow actually put into the game but where you can like look at the dungeon and what drops from all of it yeah i suppose that is something that is missing in 14 and it would be really nice to have that especially if you've got an idea burning in your head and you want you know to find some boots that go with that it'd be so much quicker if you had like a drop down menu where you could preview gear that's so cool hopefully that does make it into the game Adding the option to have joint ownership of houses isn't a priority currently. We'll need to wait a while longer for this feature since the team is focused on adding new wards right now. So somebody asked about the ability to own a house uh, with their partner or, you know, friends or whatever. And uh, it looks like they're focused on making more housing available uh, as their focus rather than actually having to uh you know <laughs> rework what's already there so that's a good thing i think most people will agree more housing equals better will there be another ishgard restoration style gatherer and crafted focus content somebody asked yoshida says there is an idea for something like this on a recent list of ideas they have for future content but it hasn't been decided if or when the team will do it it would take a mobilization of resources and staff to make content on the scale of Island Sanctuary, but there is a possibility for something smaller scale, so we will consider this further. A lot of people have been theorizing the idea that they'll be rebuilding Smileton, for example, on, on the moon, or they might be rebuilding Garlemald. Both of those are probably quite large-scale activities uh, that could happen. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Maybe the dream of those isn't completely gone, or at least not for the far future. But uh, if it's something smaller scale, then I suppose it'd be closer to the dome and enclave size, wouldn't it? Well, we'll have to wait and see, I suppose. A player asked if it could be made possible to keep talking to certain NPCs that currently disappear from the game, uh, game world after their quests are done. Yoshida says this would cause some problems, like the map being full of npcs and it could seem sad if an npc is still stood there forever even after their problem has been solved however he says that the scenario team takes requests into account and is working to deepen our relationships with important npcs he specifically mentions gaia while right now we can't go speak with her her role in the story is not over and he asks players to keep waiting on this point end quote so there's two things to take from that. One, they're moving away from that traditional MMORPG thing where you've completed a quest for somebody and they may or may not have died and they're still there because of a, like a, a time thing. I mean, War World of Warcraft has that problem with certain NPCs and the only way they get around it is by saying that, uh, for example, Northrend is locked in a permanent you know, time freeze. It's always, it's always Wrath of the Lich King when you go there. So there's, there's those implications that they're moving away from in terms of modern MMORPGs where they have phasing tech and they use that to, to remove characters. Um, but there's also something to unpack there with Gaia. So Gaia and Reen's storyline is not over. A lot of people will be happy about that. A lot of people have theorized when we might be returning to the first and in what context. Um, obviously, Runar and Ishtola, that storyline is still there. Um, Ishtola has been mentioning her want to go back to the first for the longest time now in the storyline, and that was her little activity she wanted to do herself and research into uh, just before we went into the Void storyline. So yeah, it's it's very interesting to see that they're mentioning Gaia. A lot of people will be very happy about that, I, I can assure you. 
Um, right, next up we have the housing team is testing being able to have housing interiors without pillars. Hopefully it will be able to be implemented at some point. Okay, that's quite a big one, even though it's a small piece of information. The worst thing about having pillars in your house is it kind of locks down what you can do in a certain space. A lot of people get past that by putting, uh, for example, in a large plot, putting partitions between the pillars to kind of make separate rooms. But they're always going to be dictated as to where those pillars are, right? physical things you can't remove so to have the ability to remove those completely from housing that would be really nice because it would open up the potential of where people could lay out their rooms and what they wanted to do and move partitions around and it would look really cool actually so hopefully they get a, a you know they go away with that and and you know find a positive he responds positively to the idea of having some form of spectator option for triple triad matches that's a good idea, honestly. Triple Triad, or the, although it's quite niche, it's a lot less niche in the Western world than Mahjong, for example, right? So the ability to uh, spectate that would be really nice. And the ability to see people's cards if you stand behind them, that would be really nice. I don't know what the technical limitations would be on that, but uh, spectator mode would be quite cool, actually. I would like that, especially for tournaments. Also mentions the ideas for in-game whiteboard you can draw on. That's interesting. I'm not sure if they could do that because of people's lewd brains. <laughs> you know, how long is it going to be before a whiteboard's in a game and somebody draws a penis? It, it, you know, this will happen. You know, the, the age group that we're talking about <laughs> and the maturity levels. <laughs> if you put a whiteboard in a game that you can draw on, you better put some limitations on that. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Oh dear, even if you could put writing on there, that's oh, that's going to be dangerous, isn't it? It'd be cool though, but there's always that one, you know, that one guy who will ruin it for everybody, so we'll, we'll see. Apparently there are plans to organise the items for custom delivery crafts at some point. Currently the items are all sold at different NPCs. Yeah, that would be nice um, to have like... A better quality of life system of, of ordering that yeah that makes sense plans for carbuncle glamours have been suspended apparently due to needing to redo the visual effects he will talk to the there yeah, to the developers responsible for this he also hints at future carbuncle themed items so carbuncle glamours they haven't completely forgot about those but they're working on redoing the visual uh, effects Obviously, if you haven't lived under a rock, 7.0 is bringing with it a huge visual overhaul for character models and things like that. It's likely that Carbuncle stuff is, is probably up there being reworked as well. Um, it is essentially an extension of the character that you play. It is a summon. So I wouldn't be too surprised if they had uh, some very interesting stuff in store that they can't talk about. So very cool. Can't wait for that. Yoshida says he will ask his friend Hino about doing the Yokai Watch collaboration again next time he sees him. Oh, very interesting. Uh, seeing a new Yokai Watch rerun again would be really cool, especially if they decide to add like Sage and Reaper weapons. That would make me very happy because I personally quite enjoy the grind, and Yokai Watch wasn't too bad for me. It's it, it's something to do, right? I like it. Uh, he will speak with Hayashi uh, Yosuke, lead item designer, about making the chocobo head item diable. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's that's something I didn't think about. That would be cool and any an easy way of resourcing something and repurposing it. Because of course there are different coloured chocobos in the game. Yeah, that makes sense. Very cool. Uh, one player said the release of Criterion Savage in 10 days would cause problems for their static and asked if it could be delayed. Wow. Yoshida says while he would like to be able to announce the exact date earlier, once the data is announced, he does not like to delay, end quote. So I don't know why this person was specifically asking for it to be delayed for his own personal reasons. It, it, it's, you know, it's a very naive thing to do. These things are already delayed as it is a lot of the time, and, and, you know, strict schedules have to be met and deadlines. It's a very strange question, actually. I, I don't, I'm not sure I, I really follow with the logic on that one, personally. 
On the current healer shortage in Savage Party Finder, Yoshida says there are also times when there is a tank shortage. It differs from tier to tier. He suggests that the higher difficulty of healing, in response to healers saying the role was too easy in pre prior tiers, has had many reverberations. He concludes by saying the developers will continue to monitor the situation a little further, end quote. Yeah, some of the healer 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 checks on some of the Savage um, fights are a little bit more demanding than a lot of the previous content, especially in Endwalker, if, if that's the only thing that a player has played. But um, usually things ramp up anyway. So I, I, I wasn't aware there was a healer shortage because nine times out of ten I'm playing the healer, right? But... Um, yeah, I, I guess that's something that they actively monitor. But yeah, I wasn't aware of that. Uh, there is a small one on third-party tools. He basically says he doesn't want to get into this topic any further than he already has. If he named names about specific tools that could lead to a flurry of mass reports, which he doesn't want. He says he doesn't want to direct a game that is all about cracking down on players, end quote. I mean, the less I say about that, the better as well. Um, terms of services there, right? That's all I'll say. Uh, and finally, he says he does want to do a Kingdom Hearts crossover, but he doesn't want to bring it over with just the costumes, but also the story and characters. But this is difficult in terms of securing the rights, i.e. since Disney owns Kingdom Hearts. End quote. The fact that he wants to do a Kingdom Hearts crossover, and this is something that's probably been demanded and, you know, it is at that point demanded from a player base. Like, why can't we have a crossover with Kingdom Hearts and have keyblades and costumes and stuff? But he's gone one step further and he's like, I want to also have the storyline and the characters. And um, the fact that that's on the table in terms of a discussion is a really good thing. And hopefully they go ahead with that. Now, me personally, I'm not a massive Kingdom Hearts fan, but there are so many people that are. And it would be really cool. So, uh, yeah, that should that should put a smile on a lot of people's faces today, at least with a glimmer of hope for the future. And uh, everybody who said that would never happen. It's possible. <laughs> well, there's dollars to be made, right? There's there's a way, right? That was a pretty good Q&A, honestly. There were some interesting questions, but we got a lot more information out of this than I expected. Um, of course, the rest of this write-up is fantastic. M. Killaby did a great job um, from the Zodiac Weapon Challenge, where they, had, they challenged themselves to do an entire um, uh, Zodiac Weapon on a live stream. Uh, Sakaguchi's interview about how he's progressing in the game. A lot of the other stuff is trivia, for the most part, and not really solid news so uh, and or information of what's coming, so that's why I didn't put that in. But of course, link is in the description. Knock yourself out. Read through those bits. But yeah, the Q&A was really the thing I wanted to look at. Many thanks to M. Killaby and the rest of, obviously, the Reddit team and everybody else who provides amazing summaries and translations. I wish I could do the same. I, I need to learn Japanese one day. Much love, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.